So this is the best way to start drop shipping right now if you want to make a million dollars in 2024. Now you might be thinking that's a bold claim, but the strategy that I'm going to be teaching you in this video is the same strategy we use every year to take a brand new drop shipping store from zero dollars to seven figures. Now what I've done to even increase the chances of you guys seeing this success is I've created a free Google Doc sheet that's going to contain every single step. And once we've hit 1,500 likes, it'll be in the pinned comment and in the description below. And the goal, honestly, guys, is to hit 1,500 likes within the first day of this video being uploaded because this video is going to be an absolute value bomb that you're not going to find anywhere else. So as you guys can see, I'm refreshing the screen and the numbers are going to stay the exact same. And as you can see, they did. And the online store sessions equivalent to $1.5 million. And you can see there's only $6,000 in draft orders. So you know that all the sales are legit. Now, if you look over year by year, this store's increased by 39% in sales, meaning that every single year, this store just keeps achieving more revenue. So if I show you another Shopify store analytics, you can see this one's dated from the 1st of January, 2019. You can see this store has achieved $1.1 million. So as you guys can see, I'm gonna refresh the screen and the numbers are gonna stay the exact same. And as you can see, they've stayed the same. And you can see that the online store sales have contributed to the majority of the sales and draft orders only equivalates to around about $22,000, showing you that this store is also legit. Now, I hope by me showing you these numbers, you are now going to take whatever I'm about to tell you very seriously because it's the same strategy that I use for each one of these stores. So guys, stage one to my proven formula of achieving a million dollars in 2024 with a brand new dropshipping store is understanding what makes a winning product and how you can enable a winning product very quickly. Sell a product around the biggest events upcoming in 2024. So for example, you've got sports events that are happening, you've got election year that's happening, and then you also have other things like the Olympics happening. Now you're probably thinking, how did I know that all these events are coming up? You can literally go to ChatGBT, type in what are the the biggest upcoming events in 2024 and chat GBT will literally tell you the same ones that I've just mentioned. Now you're probably thinking why does it matter that it's an election year? Why does it matter that it's the Olympics this year? Why does it matter that there's these festivals this year? Because there's already going to be natural momentum towards these things. So if you sell products within these niches that these events are in, you're already going to be selling to engage buyers. Now the most important thing is once you find out one of these upcoming events that you can capitalize on, you need to give your yourself around about two to three months to sell to these people to make it worth it. So for example, if one of these events is in November, you're going to want to start selling in July, August. That way you're going to have enough time to actually capitalize and monetize on these things. Make sure it can also be sold after the holiday event or the event or turn into a niche market store. Because the last thing that you want to do is have a nice performing store that lasts four months and then it dies out. Make sure Google Trends reflects your product name or niche trending before the event actually starts. So as you guys can see, I'm on Google Trends and I've typed in Paris Olympics as that's one of the biggest upcoming events in 2024. I've changed it to worldwide past five years and you can see based on web search, this thing's gone crazy over the last one to two years and you can see the chart just keeps going higher and higher and higher. Now you might say, what's this crazy dip here? I don't know what this is. Sometimes Google Trends glitches, but you can see overall this thing is going crazy and there's a lot of natural momentum for this event. Now, the point that I'm trying to make here is you're not selling to the actual event. You're just jumping on the interest of people's minds changing because of such a big event. Now, the last thing that I want to mention on this topic is the upcoming events don't have to be huge like the ones that I've just mentioned. They can be any upcoming event as long as you know that there's a market for it. Now, the next step of this process is the product research. Go to TikTok and Amazon and Pinterest and other social platforms. The more social platforms that you go on, the more likely you are to find a good product. Step two, type in the event into the search bar or related topics to the niche. Now, before I do this, guys, I want to show you a few things. I've actually been using ChatGBT a lot recently to help me with my product research and finding out information on the audience. So the first thing that I asked ChatGBT was what are the biggest upcoming events? It mentioned the Olympics. Then when I scroll down, you can see here, I mentioned what is the biggest sport within the Olympics. It then said that it was soccer based on the statistics that they got from the last Olympic sport and the current people attending it. Now I've typed in soccer toys into TikTok. I want to try and find a dropship product that makes sense to sell to people that are going to be interested in soccer because of the Olympic Games. Now when I've 
I've done that, I found loads of products that have come up that fit this beautifully. So this one here is called Hover Footy, and you can see here it's a video of this football that is hovering, and you can kick it within the house, and you're not going to damage the walls and get into trouble. Now this actually looks really cool, and I could have done with this when I was a child instead of using a real football. Now this would be a great product for me to use because I've actually never seen it before. Let me know in the comment section before if you've seen this product. This looks like a viral product that I can easily sell. Now you're probably thinking I found a potential product, but where does this Olympic Games thing come into this aspect? Now when I come to advertise this product, which I'll announce later on, I might want to use angles like, if your kids are watching the Olympic sports at home, don't worry, they can get involved by using this footy inside whilst they watch the games. So step four, search for the products on AliExpress to see if it is actually a dropshipping product. So guys, as you can see, I'm on AliExpress and I've searched for Harvest Soccer Ball and you can see I've got loads of sellers selling this product. Now I've even found one here that's got 4,000 orders and it's the top selling product in the last seven days. So this just proves that this is a winning product because it's literally telling me that it's got 4,000 orders and it's a top selling product on AliExpress in the last seven days. So step five is to go back to TikTok where you found the original product and search for the name of the actual product. So before I searched for soccer toy to find the product, now I'm going to search for the actual product and I want to see if there's going to be loads of videos coming up with lots of views. So for example, this one here has got 30,000 views, 65,000 views, and these are coming from different pages. This one is from Passionate. This one's from Gift Gadgets. Now you can see this video has got 26,000 views, 196,000 views. So you can see there's loads of different people. This one here has got 1.9 million views. This one's got 40,000 views. So you can see there's lots of different pages that are getting lots of views with this product. Now the main element here is you want to find at least one video with at least a million views for the product that you found. Now I've already found my video, it's right here, and it's got 1.9 million views. Now step six is to search for the product on Amazon and make sure it's got good reviews. So guys, you can see I've gone to Amazon and I found the product here and this one's got over 3,000 orders and it's got 800 ratings and it's got 4.4 star reviews. Now that's very good for Amazon. I always say as long as it's above four star reviews on Amazon, then the product is a good quality product. So guys, we're now gonna progress into stage three, which is the no paid ad section. So we found our winning upcoming event. We have now found the product that we can sell within this event now we need to drive traffic to the store so we're now going to be going over the no paid ad section using tiktok organic to go viral and get loads of sales now don't worry if you're eager to learn about the facebook ad strategy that's going to come a little bit later into the video and there will be timestamps somewhere in the search scroll bar now you're probably thinking what about the shopify store well guess what guys last week i literally made a video which is an hour long going over how to build a one product store for your shopify drop shipping product so make sure you go and check that video out at the end of this video so before we go over the step-by-step -step strategy on testing products using tiktok organic we do need to go over the product criteria does the product have a wow factor the product should be instantly captivating now my product is that football you kick inside your house that already is going to captivate the market because they're thinking whoa i can kick a ball in my house that's insane there needs to be a demand and utility it must address a real need appealing either to a broad audience or a specific niche now my product is towards the people that love football they might not have a backyard because they live in an apartment they might not have a big enough garden. So this is a problem solving product that they can use within the house. Time efficiency. Choose products that don't require excessive time to create content, particularly if you're a beginner. The initial goal is to master the TikTok algorithm and consistently achieve viral status. So for example, with my product, I'm literally going to record videos of me kicking that in my house or my apartment. So that's very easy to create content around. You want to go for products that are very easy to make content with. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is pricing strategy. Strategy. Aim to price the product at a minimum of three times the sum of your shipping and the product cost to ensure a healthy margin. And you want to stay below $39.99. So I tend to find that with TikTok Organic, if your products are priced over $39, it's hard to sell. So the sweet spot is between $19.99 and $29.99 to $39.99. So let's get on with the step-by-step -step product launch strategy. Identify accounts with at least a thousand followers and one viral video, a minimum of one million views. This indicates potential product demand and social proof so of course to do this guys we need to go back to tiktok and search for the name of our product now you can see here i've typed in hover soccer ball now on the right hand side you can
you can see other searches for. So all of these here could be potential search terms for the same product. Now I've typed in hover soccer ball, but I might wanna type in flying soccer ball. You might wanna change a few of these keywords to find other videos that you're not getting with these keywords. So as you guys can see, I've searched for another search word called flying soccer ball, and you can see that the videos that are coming up now are different to the videos that are coming up with hover soccer ball. So you wanna search for loads of different keywords. That way it's gonna help you find accounts and videos. Now by doing that guys, I've been able to find two different TikTok accounts that match those requirements. And you can see they've got one video here with 4 million views, another video with 4 million views. You can see if I scroll down, they've got other videos with 300,000 views, a million views. You can see that this page has consistently gone viral with this product. And by looking at their account and their videos, you can see that a lot of these videos look very simple to make and they look very similar, meaning that this is gonna be very easy to shoot content for. Now another page that I've been able to find is called floatingfooty.co and you can see they've got over a thousand followers 2,500 and they've got a video here with 794,000 views and they've got other videos with 30,000 views, 100,000 views. So you can see that this page has also got a viral video. Now I class a viral video with anything between 500,000 views upwards of 10 million views. Now step three is market analysis. Use TikTok search functionality with the product name or relevant keywords to compile a list of accounts selling the same product. Analyze their viral videos to identify common factors. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to compare both of those two different pages that I've been able to find and then we can look at single videos. Number one, they're literally doing POV videos, them shooting the video on their phone of their foot kicking it inside off the wall. And if I look at flow and football, they're doing the exact same. They're using a wooden floor. You can see wooden floor, wooden floor. They're both using wooden floors and you can see that they start with it in their hand, they drop it on the floor and they kick it against the wall. So that's the common trait. They've also used the same captions in the same videos. These videos are very similar. Now what you want to do is you actually want to watch all of these videos, see if they're using voiceovers, see what music they're using, see what sounds they're using and see what they're saying in the captions and see what hashtags they're using and then compile that into a Google Doc list so you can use it for your account. Now this video video here has got 4 million views and this is super interesting. You can see the angle that they've gone for to attract an audience is I have found the toy Brazil are using to train for the World Cup and if I play it you can see here they've used that as the caption and then it shows them doing it. It says it glides and it doesn't damage walls. Now remember what I said at the start of the video. We're now going to be using this for the Olympics. So this guy is on about it for the Brazil football team. We can say that this team in the Olympics is using this to train. So we can literally use this same angle and hook but for a new upcoming trend which is obviously the Paris Olympics. Now like I said to you guys before you want to go back to the TikTok search and search for those keywords again and you're going to find one-off video. So this is a one-off video and this guy is him kicking it down the stairs. So this went viral because he kicked it down the stairs. So if I keep scrolling down you're going to see one-off videos where they're not pages they're literally just one video and you want to identify why they're doing so well and you want to spend a good few hours doing this so you can figure out the hook the audience and what type of video does well. So step five is content preparation. Prepare at least 42 videos in advance, playing to post three times daily over two weeks. This intense testing phase is crucial for gauging audience engagement and algorithm compatibility. So this is literally the most important section of TikTok organic. This step five will make or break whether your product goes viral or it doesn't. Now you're probably thinking, what about making the content? How do I do that? How do I figure out how to edit the videos? I've literally made a video about three weeks ago teaching you guys step-by-step step how to get your smartphone, how to record content, how to edit it on CapCut. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a completely free course on TikTok Organic. Yes, you heard me correctly, a completely free course on how you can do TikTok Organic and earn up to $10,000 per month. So make sure you check that video out at the end of this one. Now step six is persistence and patience. Understand that going viral might take a minimum of two weeks. Success on TikTok often builds cumulatively where on viral video can significantly boost the visibility of other content. So let's say for example, you've posted 23 videos, one's gone viral. That one viral video might redirect a load of viewers to your other videos to help boost them to go and viral as well. So step seven is dedicated account management. Start with one personal TikTok account, focusing all efforts on quality content creation. If possible, consider managing a second account 
for additional reach. So that basically means start with one account making content for your page. And then if you can handle two, get a second account made and start pushing unique content on the second page. Now, step eight, consistent posts and schedule. Post videos three times a day, tracking performance to identify optimal posting times for your audience. So for example, if you're two weeks in, you're gonna know what times of the day work. You're gonna know which types of marketing angles, which types of sounds, which types of effects work the best in your videos. And if you don't track this, then you'll never know. So it's so important to put everything you find in a Google Sheet, in a Google file. That way you can track what works and what doesn't. Now, step six is strategic hashtag use. Apply three to five hashtag strategy per video, mirroring the approach of your most successful competitors. So if you look at the most viral videos of your competitors, you can see what hashtags they used. Now, my best advice is every video that you post today, so you're gonna be posting three videos a day, do one with hashtags, the second one with hashtags, and the third one without hashtags. You wanna test with hashtags and without to see if it makes any difference for your account. Step 10 is content optimization. Monitor what types of content yield the best engagement and refine your strategy. So let's say, for example, the first method that you use is the most compelling, then you need to double down on that and keep making similar content and keep refining it and refining it based on users' engagement and comments. Step 11, resilience. Stay motivated and persistent, understanding that success on social media often requires time and adoption. Now, because you guys aren't leveraging money, you're leveraging your time. You have to give the algorithm time to pick this up. And you also need to invest a lot of time in making more videos again and again and again. Now, what I always say is if you're two weeks into doing TikTok organic with a brand new product and you've not got one video that's got at least 500,000 views, then I would kill the product and move on. So that's technically my killing strategy. Now, step 12 is cross platform promotion. Extend your reach by posting your TikTok content and repurposing it for Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. That way you're going to maximize your exposure and you never know. Instagram Reels might do better than TikTok and you also might want to try YouTube Shorts because that might even do better than the other two platforms. Now you should only be doing that once you find some small success on TikTok, meaning that at least one of your videos gets around about 10 to 100,000 views. Then you can start trying repurposing. Now step 13 is scalability. Apply this strategy to test six to eight products per month. Continue refine your approach based on performance data and audience feedback. Now it's very likely that the first product you try will not go viral. It's very likely that the second one won't, but you've got to keep going. And I normally say between your sixth and eighth product, you're going to find one that goes viral. So if you can try and test two products a month, three products a month, although it's going to take a lot of time, as long as you refine the strategy, you're going to find enough time to keep doing three products a month. That way, within your second month, you're going to find one that at least hits a million views. As long as you follow this strategy step by step. Now you can see in the Google Docs sheet, I've said here, recommended videos to learn TikTok organic. I've left two links here to two of the videos that will go even more in depth on how to do TikTok organic. And it will literally show you the posting strategy, how to edit videos, and even more info that's going to help you go viral with TikTok organic. So guys, that brings us on to stage four of this process on my proven formula for you to achieve your first million dollars in 2024 with dropshipping. Now, the reason why I'm going all in with Facebook ads in 2024 is because although yes, it does have its problems, it is still consistently the best platform when it comes to online marketing. Now, if you wanna learn TikTok ads, guys, I literally dropped a full course on TikTok ads two weeks ago going over my full TikTok ad strategy. Now, this is super, super important, guys. If you don't have what I'm about to say, then your Facebook ads won't work. This is actually more important than you running the ads on the business manager. So in order to get started with this beginner friendly strategy, you'll need to get three different creatives to build your ads. I'd recommend that you get one picture, one video and one carousel ad. If you're unfamiliar with what a carousel is, it's just a logical sequence of pictures that people can side scroll through. Don't worry if your product doesn't really work with any of these types of ads. If that's the case, just double down on one of the others. For example, if you have a product that has a unique feature that you can see in action, like a posture corrector, you probably want to use two videos and potentially skip the carousel. On the other hand, if your product is a home decor item or something where the main wow factor is appearance, then it will probably be a good idea to double down on images because showing a video of a vase or a table is probably not going to be the useful versus just showing a picture. 
So after you have your creatives ready, you'll need one ad copy and one headline. For the ad copy, I find that short copies generally yield a better result for most dropshipping products. Unless you're selling something really complex or you're targeting an older demographic, most people these days don't want long reads. So keep it to one to two short sentences as that is enough. Again, using the example of a posture corrector, do you know that sitting all day can cause back problems that linger for the rest of your life? Correcting your posture can save you from serious back pain. We are starting the first sentence with a disconcerting question to get people's attention together with an alert emoji to make people stop scrolling. This is a great template to get people to want to know more and click to your website. The last thing that you'll need to put together is your headline. Facebook recommends up to 40 characters, but I'd advise you to stay under 30. Longer headlines often are moved to the second line and the ad looks aesthetically worse in my opinion when that happens. Okay guys, we're now ready to make our campaign. So you should be in the Facebook business manager and ads manager and you should look at a screen like this and you want to go to the top left where it says create then the first thing that you're going to be selecting is sales and then you want to hit continue then it's going to say choose your campaign sale and it's going to have advantage shopping plus already selected i would go with manual sales campaign as that's what you need when you're testing now you can see here on the screen if you look on the left hand section you've got where it says new sales campaign and it's got a folder that means that you're in the campaign level then you've got these four boxes that means that you're in the ad set level then you've got this one window that means you're in the ad level so we're going to start with the campaign and it's going to say new sales campaign you're going to change this to your product name so you're going to change the campaign name to product name broad and then test one then if you scroll down you're going to see campaign details buying type auction and then campaign objective is sales and then if you keep scrolling down it's going to say use a catalog you want to turn this off and then where it says a b testing you want this off advantage campaign budget turn this off and click next now where it says ad set name we're going to leave this blank for now and come back to it then where it says conversion we're going to do website where it says performance goal we're going to do maximize the number of conversions then you want to make sure that your pixel is selected and then where it says conversion event you want to select it as purchase which is right here and then where it says cost per result goal you don't need to fill this in you want to keep scrolling down to where it says budget and scale now this is where things get super important if your product is priced at $50 or under you need to set the daily budget to $10 now, if your product is over $50, then you need to set the daily budget at $20. Now, you're probably thinking, why does the budget matter? Because depending on who you're targeting, if you're selling a higher tier product, then you need to select the type of audience based on the budget. The budget that you give to Facebook will determine the quality of people that they'll show the ad to. Now, you also need to bear in mind that if you're selling a product at $50, you need to be making at least a 3.5x on your product cost, which is your product cost plus shipping. So if you're paying $3 for product and then $2 for shipping, that's your product cost being $5. Then you need to make a three and a half X on that for you to even make any profit. Now, what I say in Facebook ads in 2024 is you wanna be making at least 20 to $30 on your product. If you're not making those types of numbers, you're gonna find it very hard to find profit on your products. So for example, if I'm buying my product for $5, including shipping, then I need to be selling it for $35.99 or $34.99 to make some good margins where it makes sense to advertise it on Facebook. Now, where it says start date, you want to set this for the next day, midnight. So for example, today is the 13th. Now I've selected the 14th and I've put it at 00. That way it's the next day and that way our ads are going to spend evenly. Then it's going to say budget scaling. You don't need to worry about this for now. This is more scalability types of ads. For now, I'll leave this unmarked. Now, the next important part is going to be your countries and audience control. Now, for locations, I put the United Kingdom. Kingdom, United States, Canada, Australia, France, Germany, Norway, Sweden, Ireland. Now you should always be targeting the US, UK and Canada. Those are the three staples. But on top of that, you can then choose European countries. And for example, in mine is Sweden, Germany, France, Island. Now you can add more to it if you want guys, but you should only be targeting the top tier European countries within your campaign. Now, of course, the more countries that you add, the more expensive your ads are going to get. 
Now these are the ones that I stick to these days and you can take a print screen of them or you can just copy them from the video. Now if you scroll down, you're gonna see minimum age. I set it at 21 because I don't want low quality people looking at my ads. So by doing that, you're gonna cut out a lot of low quality traffic to your ads. Then you're gonna see languages. Now you can either set this to all languages or English. Those are the two options that I'll give you. Now if you scroll down again, you're gonna see advantage plus audience. This is a new feature that's very powerful within Facebook and what you you want to do is you don't want to have a custom audience you want to leave the age at 2165 gender obviously depending on your product if it's a male only product select male if it's a female only product select female but for now I'm going to do both then where it says detail targeting you need to think about the product that you're selling now let's say for example I'm selling a posture corrector or even case I'm selling that flying or hovering football I might want to type in football and you can see here on the drop down menu, it's coming up with employee for football or football interest. Now you only want to select the interest, not employee. So every time you look at these interests, only select where it says interest. Don't select where it says employees. You only want to select the name of the topic and it should say interest next to it. Now there's two good options here, which is football and football sports. Either one would be great. Now it is super important that you have this feature turned on, which is advantage plus audiences. This is a new feature that will drastically help with your audiences when it comes to your ads. You can see here, I can turn it off. You can see where it says switch to original audience options. You don't want that. You want to use this advantage plus option. Then if you scroll down, you're gonna see placements and I leave the placements on advantage placements as this works better with the Facebook's new algorithm. So once you've done all that, guys, you wanna scroll all the way back and change the name of your ad set to what you've just done. So you can see here now my ad name is called 21 to 65 as that's the ages. I've changed it to advanced placement football as that's the interest and the type of targeting that I've done. And I've changed it to $10 as that's the budget that I'm spending per ad set. And I've also said top 10 as those are the countries that I'm targeting within this ad set. And it's so important to name your ad sets because when it comes to killing and scaling, this will help you identify which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones. Now, once you've done all that guys, you can just hit next. Now where it says add name, you wanna change this to what you're doing. So for example, if I'm doing three videos, I might wanna call this one video one. Now, once you've done that, you wanna scroll down to where it says identify, you wanna select your page. Then once you've selected your page, you can see here where it says add setup, you can do create ad. You wanna hit create ad and then you want to click manual upload and then the format will depend on what you're doing so single image or video so if, whether you're doing videos or not this is the one you want to do then you can see carousel and then you can see collection now you can see here where it says multi advertiser ads recommended now you can either leave this on or leave it off or what you can do is you can do one with and one without now this is something that i do like to test so let's say in one ad we're going to do three ads so in one ad you might want it on in one ad you might want it off that way you can test to see if it's actually making a difference. And because this is such a new feature to Facebook, it's always good to test it within one of the ads that you're setting up. Now where it says add media, you obviously wanna add your video or your image here. And then where it says primary text, that's where your ad copy goes that we made. Now where it says headline, this is obviously where your headline is going. And then where it says description, I normally put free track shipping in this section. And then where it says call to action, I always do shop now. And then where it says website URL, you always wanna put your product page URL here and you always wanna test it. A lot of people put their URL there, but they don't test it. Always put your product page URL here and test to see if it works. Now, once you've filled all of that information in, you wanna scroll all the way back up into the top left where it says video one, or let's say it says carousel one. And then you wanna click the three dots, click duplicate, and you wanna change this to two different copies. As in total, you should have three creatives. So now we've got one, two, three. So what I might wanna do now is I might wanna change one to video two and upload the second video that I've got made. Now again, if you're doing carousels instead of videos, you're obviously changing it to carousel instead of a video. So what I would do here is I'd select the second video, use the same ad copy, the same text, everything's the same, but the video. And then on the last copy here, I might wanna do a single image, so I might call this image one. Now on my last ad, I might wanna change the name to carousel one and change this into a carousel and start up uploading my carousel images. So in this hypothetical example, I'm doing two videos, one carousel. So what I would do is I would fill out this carousel. You can see here where it says add creative, you can see carousel cards. You need at least two cards. You can click add image to cards and then you can select the images. Now, if you're doing a carousel, you're probably thinking, is it the same for each card? You can see card one 
and then you can see card two down here. So you're gonna be using the same headline, the same description, and the same product URL for each carousel card. You're not changing them, they're gonna all be the same, and you wanna be using three carousel cards. You don't wanna be doing two, you only wanna be doing three cards on a carousel, no more and no less. Then once you've done that, guys, you wanna to come to the top left again, and you wanna duplicate the ad set, which is the one with the four boxes. You wanna duplicate this four times, which means in total, you're going to have five different ad sets, and once you've done that, click duplicate. So guys, the only thing that we're changing in the duplicated ad sets, if you come to the top left, you can see them here with the four boxes, one, two, three, four, and five with the original. We're only changing the interest. If you go back to the ad set, you can see it should now say copy at the end of the name. We're just gonna scroll down to the actual interest, which is here, and we're gonna delete it, and we're gonna add a new interest. Now, the interest that we're gonna now target is a different type of interest to the audience. So we've targeted football for my product. Now I might wanna try instead of targeting football so directly, I might wanna just type in sports. So you can see here, sports, sports is an interest. So I'm gonna select this, scroll all the way back and change this as a name to sports because this is the new interest that I'm targeting. Then I wanna get rid of copy at the end. Then again, for the next ad set that I've copied, I'm gonna delete the copy at the end of the name, scroll down and choose a new interest. Now this new interest, interest might be something totally different. It might actually be a football team that I might target. So what you want to do with your targeting is target lots of different ideas within that niche. So it could be a movie. It could be a football team. It could be an influencer or a celebrity. It could be the topic itself. It could be a location of where that sport or where that person participates in. You don't want to just go for the same stuff like soccer, football. You don't want to go with too many similar interests because then you're not widening your audience. Now, once you've changed the interest for the four other ad sets and you've changed the name for the ad sets, you just want to hit publish in the bottom right. Now, once your campaign has been published, it should be under review and it should be running at midnight the next day. Now, you want to let that ad run for three days. It's extremely important that you do not touch your ads for three days. Now, as a beginner, I know how hard it is to look at the money being spent and no sales coming in. Or you start to make small edits to the ad sets, don't do that at all. I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Whatever you do, literally sit on your hands or freeze your hands. Do not make any changes, even if the analytics look bad. Editing an ad set resets the optimization. Do not touch anything for three days. So let's say day two comes and you start touching it, you could have literally ruined what day one done and all that money you spent has now been burned and literally gone to nothing. The first thing that you want to check after three days of running the ads is simple. Which ad set got a sale? If no ad set got a sale after three days, it's time to turn it off and to replace it with new ones. To do this, simply duplicate the bad ad set, change the interest, rename it and publish it and duplicate and turn off the original. That's literally all you need to do. Check your purchase column, replace any ad set that does not have a purchase after three days of running. So guys, how you would do that is you'd come back to your ads manager, go to the campaign section here, and you can see this campaign here. I'm gonna select it. I'm then gonna to go to ad set, and then I'm gonna scroll down to where it says purchases. So you can see here, website purchases. So you can see here, this ad set got one purchase. So this one can be left on. These can be turned off and deleted. And then what I wanna do is once I've deleted these and turned them off, I can now duplicate the one with the purchase and start targeting different interests. So I'm gonna hit duplicate. And the only thing that I'm gonna do when I duplicate this guys is change the audience. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down and you can see this is the interest that I targeted. I'm gonna click suggestions and I'm gonna pick one of the ones that Facebook has suggested for me on the new duplicate. Now I can't emphasize this enough. If you turn off all your ad sets because they all didn't get a sale, then you need to replace them with another five ad sets. You should always have five ad sets running at any given time. So if you turn three off, replace another three. If you turn off two, replace another two. You should always have five ad sets running at the testing phase. You shouldn't just turn them off and leave them off. You should always have something replacing them. And remember, the only thing you change is the interest and you change it based on suggestions of a winning ad set or you just look for a completely new interest if you haven't got any sales or any winning ad sets. Now you wanna repeat this process until you reach a loss of a total of $300 to $400. Note that I said a loss 
cost, not an amount spent. As you run your ads, you could likely get some sales, which generates a profit to offset on your spend. So make sure that you account for that. Now, if you're at a loss of 300 to $400, you can either try one more time or you can find a new product and repeat this whole process. The aim of the game to success in dropshipping is learning to kill quick, not getting emotional and move on to the next product. The aim of the game is to test fast, but test efficiently with a good system like this. So how do you tell if an ad set is profitable? Make sure that you enable the ROAS column or return on ad spend. Your ROAS is how you tell if an ad set is profitable or not. In order for your ad set to be profitable, your ROAS must be a break even. You can use a calculator to find out your break even ROAS, or you can use this dropshipping calculator here, which is completely free to use. So how do you use this calculator, guys, is super easy. On the left-hand side, you can see COGS, which stands for cost of goods. So if it's gonna cost me three dollars to buy the product for two dollars to ship it that equals five now if i'm selling the product for 34.99 i'm going to put 34.99 so you can see here my cost multiplier is seven my profit margin is 30 and my break even ROAS is 1.2 so this number here basically means as long as i'm above it i'm making money if i'm below it I'm losing money. So let's say, for example, in my Facebook ads manager, it's showing me that I'm at 1.9 ROAS, I'm making money. So you can see here, I'm back in my Facebook ads manager and you can see my break even ROAS for this ad set is 0.31, which means I'm in a loss. It has to be greater than 1.2 for me to be profitable. So that's the easiest way to figure out if you're profitable or unprofitable. After your first three days check, you should have at least an ad set that ran until day five. If it had a sale and on day five, you should check the ROAS. If it is above break even ROAS, then congratulations, you have a potential winning audience. If it's not, it's time to shut it down and replace it. It's all explained above. If you have an ad set that passes your five day check, it's a good idea to try and scale. Remember, not every ad set that passes the five day check will be scalable, but finding your first scalable one is how you transition from testing to scaling your product. The scaling phase is when you maximize your profit. Remember in the testing phase, you're not thinking about profit. You're thinking about, have I found a sustainable break even ROAS audience that I can then go to scale. You're literally in the testing phase trying to work out what's the winning creative, what's the winning audience, and how can I progress it into scaling? So let's talk about the scaling phase. If your ad set has passed a five day check, it's time to duplicate it. I like to duplicate winning ad sets and double the budget. The new ad set will be an exact copy of the original, just double the budget. You should then apply the same checks to this ad set as before, third day check for the sales and the fifth day check for the break even row out. So, this, so the rules literally stay the same as if they did in the testing phase. So I'm gonna show you an example of how you duplicate a winning ad set. So for example, let's say this ad set here is the winning one. I'm going to click duplicate. You're going to do it in the original campaign. Number of copies, you're going to leave it as one. Click duplicate. Now, the only change that I'm going to make, guys, with this duplicated winning ad set is changing the budget. So you can see the budget right now is $10. So I'm going to double it. So double 10 is 20. So that's literally all I'm doing, doubling the budget from 10 to 20 and then clicking publish and the same rules, which is the three-day rule and the five-day rule apply to this new ad set once it's published. If these requirements are met, then you can either duplicate it again, horizontally scaling, or you can try and increase the budget in 20 to 30% increments vertically scaling. Do not go over 30% increments or it might reset the learning phase. So what we're trying to say here, guys, is let's say, for example, this is my winning ad set. I've duplicated it by increasing the budget double. Now I've got two options. If that carries on doing well, I can either scale it again by duplicating it again, increasing that $20 by either 20% or 30%. Or I don't change the budget and I just duplicate it three times. So let's say I don't want to increase the budget on the second version. I just want to hit duplicate and change the number of copies between two or three. So let me explain that again. Let's say the first round of scaling works. I increase the budget from 10 to 20. That $20 budget one is now done very well. It's profitable after the fifth day. I'm now either gonna increase it again by duplicating it by 20% or 30%, or I'm going to duplicate it by just three times to two times. So I either have the option of increasing the budget in a new ad set, or I duplicate the $20 one by two or three times. That way I'm choosing vertically or horizontally. 
Now, in my opinion, I'd actually recommend that you try both options to see which one works best on your ad account. Once you transition into the scaling phase, remember to keep adding new audiences to the test. With your winning audiences in your testing campaign, your scaling ad sets do not last forever. So you must keep testing new variables that you can keep scaling once your current scaling ad sets run out. So what that basically means, guys, is if you find a winning ad set, don't just think, oh, this is going to last forever and I can just keep scaling it. You have to constantly find new audiences to scale and new creatives to scale. Do not underestimate the importance of new creatives. It's very easy to fall into the trap of neglecting new creatives, especially for beginners. It's very easy and appealing to just duplicate ad sets, test new interests, increase budgets and keep doing it again and again. Do not fall into this mistake. Creatives are one of the best, if not the best way to scale your marketing by adding new creatives to winning audiences. You can scale your marketing spend with without having to continuously find more and more winning audiences. I'd advise you to make a new set of three creatives to test every single week, launch it in your testing campaign with one of your best audiences and run it through the same test we applied in the testing phases above on this cheat sheet. So what we're trying to say here, guys, is it's actually easier to find new winning creatives than it is to find winning audiences. You're gonna have limits on how many audiences that you can test on Facebook. So you can test around about 40 audiences on Facebook but you can test 300 creatives on Facebook. So which one is more likely to be scaled long term? The other thing that you need to bear in mind is you should always have a testing campaign. So you might want to create a new campaign, strictly call it testing campaign, or you might want to create a brand new campaign that's strictly designed for duplicating and scaling new ad sets into. So when I taught you guys how to duplicate ad sets, you might want to create a new campaign instead of duplicating an original. That way you have one campaign for scaling, one campaign for testing. That way you can work out which is which and you can keep them to strict rules. But you should always have a testing campaign campaign for creatives and audiences. So guys, that was my proven plan for you to achieve your first million dollars online with dropshipping in 2024. Make sure you get this video to 1,500 likes so you can get this cheat sheet so you can follow it down to a T in step-by-step -step order. Make sure you let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section below and I hope this helps you achieve your first million dollars online. Let me know what you thought of this video as well guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.